For the past four months, I've been working on my indie game, Mini Moles, and in all that time, not once did I step back and realize, it's shit. So, let's fix that. But how? Well, it definitely isn't the gameplay, because that's completely balanced and without any flaws or vital issues at all. So, what could it be? Okay, okay. It's finally time to make actual models for my game, I guess. Problem is, where does one get these so-called 3D models? Sure, there are websites where I can download nice assets for a price, but I'm broke as f so that's not an option. Well, there are also free downloads, but they look <coughs> interesting. So I guess I'm doing it myself. After very careful consideration of all the possible different 3D modeling applications, I decided to learn Blender. And for anyone who knows how to use Blender, you all know where I went first. And now that I'm an expert, this should be a piece of cake. Next, I had to actually decide on the game's art style. Would it have cutting edge, next gen graphics with RTX enabled photorealistic environments? Well, not exactly. I'm very lazy, <clears throat> efficient, not just in managing my time, but also optimizing the game's demands on your computer's resources. So the art style for my game, it has to be super simple. And then one day I was just minding my own business, you know, I had a brilliant idea. What makes 3D modeling so time consuming? It's all those polygons, making sure every edge and corner is in the perfect position to look like real life. So what if we made a game, but just got rid of those silly triangles? And let's be real, how hard can it actually be? While this time-lapse plays, I just want to say that the past couple months, I've really appreciated the support. I definitely can't say I've expected this many people to be looking at my videos and stuff, so I'm really grateful of that. Um, you can de definitely expect some more cool content coming in the future. Uh, I'm lining up a collab right now, so that's going to be really cool to see. Uh, they'll definitely be on the channel as well. And, you know, might even do some game jams and stuff like that, so super exciting future. Hopefully you're as excited as I am to, you know, keep going. But yeah, back into the main bit of the video. One super big inspiration for the art style I chose was Tabs. I don't know if you played it. The art style in that one is really funny. I love the ragdoll physics. I love like the low poly art style. So I decided if I love it so much, why don't I just add it to my game? Uh, then I love my game equally as much. That's definitely how it works. Nah, uh, so yeah, low poly definitely the choice for me. To achieve this, I had to kind of capture the essence that makes Tabs such a hilarious game. And with this in mind, I actually started making the models. This consists of pretty rigorous process of looking at reference models, copying reference models, and then finally pasting reference models. And we're done. Nah, just kidding. I had to actually learn from the beginning what makes good low poly art. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that look easy to make, but it's actually quite hard to make it look good. 
But as always, with a little bit of practice, a few iterations and a lot of help, here are the final results. I also thought that a cell shader and an outline would also make it look further like a comic book. If you don't know what a cell shader is, it's basically just a tune shader, makes things look, you know, kind of cartoonish. And after switching a few materials around in Godot's editor, it was pretty much done. Uh, if you want to add this yourself, I'll link the resource I used in the description. And just a quick side note, I think it's better to make an outline in Blender than use the same one in this add-on, just because it looks so much better. With the models complete, I started on the exciting task of adding animations. I aim for natural looking movements, incorporating scale changes as the object speeds up, you know, just to make it look natural. I actually tested the game this time with a few other fellow game devs, and it was completely fine with no issues whatsoever. I'd say it's definitely one thing to create a game in isolation, but it's a super different experience to see others interact with it. Watching them play, I actually noticed how they approach the challenges differently. Their reactions to the game mechanics and stuff like that, the strategies for navigating through the map. And, you know, as a game dev, it's really easy to become blinded to flaws in your game. Just because you're so used to one aspect or element of gameplay. And, you know, getting others' feedback is super important when making games, I feel. One of them said it can be quite punishing to hit a corner or bump into an object. And I realized the trolley in the game had zero bounce, and that's why that was happening. Making every collision feel like you're hitting a brick wall. Essentially, all the momentum was just getting fully absorbed by the objects, stopping the trolley dead in its tracks. This wasn't the fun experience I was hoping for, so I decided to tweak the physics a bit. By increasing the bounce just a little bit, the collisions became less of a penalty and more of an interesting challenge that looked pretty funny. It added a new layer of strategy and fun, making the game, you know, not only more forgiving, but more engaging to play. And of course, it would not be a Kobe Dev video without some bug removal, or as I like to call it, feature editing. One feature that had to go was the currency system. You know, it was just always evaluated to zero, even after, you know, depositing things at the checkout. I just felt like this feature really didn't mesh well with the game's overall style, didn't go with the flow. After, you know, a little bit of thought, I realized that simplifying things would enhance the gaming experience, so unfortunately, this feature will no longer be with us. Then there was the UI. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, the UI was a disaster. It looked terrible, I knew it needed a complete overhaul, but tackling the UI is a pretty big job, so one that I couldn't really squeeze into this development cycle without delaying this video even further. So guess what the focus of the next devlog is going to be? That's right, a UI makeover. It's a task I'm not exactly thrilled about, but it's necessary. For now though, I'm wrapping up this devlog here, and I promise when we meet again, that UI will be looking a whole lot better. So thank you very much for sticking along to the end. I did hope you enjoyed me coming back. It's been a while. Um, the game looks a lot better. The gameplay is a different story, but the game looks a lot better. So hopefully you enjoy it. You know, I'll see you in the next video. Did I say in the next video? Anyways. I will see you in the next video. You already know I don't cut outros. I leave it real. I keep it real for the, you know, people at the end. So this is the real me. No cuts. All right. Anyways, get out of here. I want to see you gone. Bye.